included in our revenue budget, it would be included in the surplus if there was a capital gain or it could push us into deficit. The reason they've given us the um, override is because it's not until you actually sell the pooled fund, you don't realise the gain. So it would artificially inflate our general fund balance or deflate it. <coughs> so, uh, I mean, um, the, the, the variations of market value at any one time um, are not relevant for reporting purposes. Uh, we report them in, so in our balance sheet, we would report the overall balance. Um, but what the override does is it we put it into a reserve which picks up the unrealized gains or losses. Um, uh, for this particular fund, you can see the, uh, the most recent valuation, it's now over 6 million. Um, so, so if at the 31st of March we did have to include it in our um, in our account, it would show it would add one million to the surplus. But if members spend that, we don't actually have the money yet because we haven't sold the fund. And, and the override has a five-year period. Is that coming to an end? Uh, yes, it will come to an end um, in 23-24. Um, uh, the hope in the sector is that override will be extended. Thank you. We've both learned something new. <laughs> Councillor Weir. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just having sort of followed Councillor Godfrey's page 129, slightly lost my, my place, but my question was, and it kind of links back to the previous section, is that um, we have a budget for the SAP uh, um, of about 20 million and something. Um, we have on this paper clarification that uh, the council can no longer borrow through the Public Works and Loan Board to, to fund investment for yields. Uh, to what extent does that constrain uh, our, our ability to act, uh, to use the SAP that perhaps we wasn't in the past? <coughs> the um, strategic asset purchase scheme um, does define what we can purchase with it and it does include regeneration. But it may not be quite tight enough for the public works loan board's definition at the moment. I mean, what is important is that anything we do purchase, and regardless of whether we borrow, actually, if we borrow internally, we cannot bar borrow purely as an investment. So we can't, even if we had the surplus funds and we went out and bought um, something purely as an investment, it would preclude us borrowing from the Public Works Loan Board for anything else. So what's important and one of the reasons for the review of the Strategic Asset Purchase Scheme is to make sure that the terms of reference of the, of the Strategic Asset Purchase Scheme make sure that it's tight enough that we don't go outside of those rules. Uh, we can borrow for regeneration purposes. So it's it's defining re regeneration purposes. And it probably, I think, I think the terms of reference do include purchases outside of the district, but within the LEP area, we may, we, I don't think we've ever done that. Well, it would be very, very difficult to claim that a purchase outside of the district was for regeneration purposes. So that's the sort of amendment we need to have to the Strategic Asset Purchase Scheme to make sure that we comply with the Public Works Land Board um, <coughs> rules, because it, it, it is a big risk that if we made a mistake there, the HRA would really be in trouble because that's where the real borrowing is planned to be in the, in, in the longer term. But you know it would affect us across across the fees when we need to buy. Um, so it's very very important that we, we review the terms of reference. There. Thank you, Councillor Cover. Any other questions on the main part of this paper? No. Then we shall move on to uh, appendix 
A, page one through two, one through three. Any questions on appendix A? Oh. Mm -hmm. I, I, I hesitate to ask anything on this because all in are not here to uh, explain the, uh, the, uh, the their forecasts. But um, their, uh, their, the top line of, uh, on page 143, predicting that over the next two and a half years, we're going to see uh, only one uh, increase in the bank base rate to a half percent seems um, ridiculously over optimistic. <laughs> Our increase has been very good up to this point. Uh, you know, I think we all know that over the, over the last few years, they've got it spot on when the markets have said it'll go up or uh, this time, and then from there up. But um, yeah. that's, you know, so much of that's opinion. We're in a very volatile period. Um, uh, and, and I'm sure they will um, review their, 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 their advice. Yeah. And, and again, it's back to the discussion I think we had earlier, which is about inflation. You know, there was quite a strong view middle of last year that there would be a spike in inflation, but it wouldn't last. Um, it, it would be short term. And now I think there's less certainty about that. And, and I'm sure that that all ties in with um, Arling Close presumably are, are having to review a lot of their assumptions on that, as a, a, a huge number of people are having to. Um, so, yeah, this is probably a bit story Thank you for asking that, Councillor Godfrey. Thank you for your answer, Councillor Cutler. Um, any further questions on Appendix A? <coughs> Appendix B, then? Page 144. No. Okay, do we have any debate on this paper, please? Wonderful. Then I think we've all agreed that we've asked our, our questions on this and done it due diligence. So we shall move on to item 11, having already covered item 10, um, to note the work programme for 21-22. You had a look at that and agreed to note it. Agreed. Agreed. Um, and the item 12 to note the latest forward, key, forward plan of key decisions for March 2022. Have you had a look through that? Happy? Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. And that concludes tonight's formal business. Thank you for your um, engagement as always, and thank you to the um, officers for joining us this evening for the hard work that goes into this. Have a good evening. Thank you.